Uh, so uh, let's look at, uh, or let's start with the uh, Moivre Laplace theorem. So that's a Gaussian approximation to binomial. Gaussian or normal approximation to binomial random variable. <coughs> So a binomial random variable is uh, with uh, two parameters n and p. This comes up in a coin tossing experiment. You toss a coin n times, and p represents the probability of getting a head. So if x, x is the number of heads in n tosses, probability of getting k heads in n tosses is n choose k, uh, p to the power k, q to the power n minus k, k equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, up to n. This is binomial. So n and p are the two parameters. q is 1 minus p. If you plot this, uh, it's going to look like this. So essentially, it has this uh, shape. So the values go from 0, 1, 2, 3, up to n. Uh, and this is uh, p0, p1, uh, p, uh, pi, et cetera, or pk, rather. And this is pn. So this is pk. If I call this to be uh, p of uh, pk, that's what I have plotted. This is binomial. On the other hand, a Gaussian looks like this. This is a this is a Gaussian density function, a bell-shaped curve. And the density function can be written as <coughs> one over square root of two pi sigma squared e raised to minus x minus mu the whole squared over 2 sigma squared. What I want to show is that uh, the binomial under some conditions will begin to look like a Gaussian or a normal density function. Uh, so the easiest way to do this is uh, uh, look at the characteristic functions of uh, both the random variables and uh, show, show that under some condition one is going to look like the other. <coughs> So the uh, characteristic function of Gaussian, I'm just going to write down the result here. Uh, so we, we will do this for, uh, a, uh, so the characteristic function here is, this is a standard result. And uh, so in particular, if mu is zero, that's it's a zero mean random variable, then the characteristic function, and uh, let's say sigma squared is 1, then the characteristic function looks like e raised to minus omega squared by 2. So let me start from here and uh, look at uh, a new random variable y, which is x minus np over square root of npq. And you will see the reasons to why this uh, strange normalization. So I'm going to start with the characteristic function of y. Uh, so this characteristic function by definition is e raised to j omega y. But y is going to be substituted by e raised to j omega x minus np over square root of npq. So I'm going to pull out some constants. So this is e raised to minus np uh, j omega over square root of npq multiplied by e raised to j omega x over square root of npq. So notice that this is the characteristic function of x evalu evaluated at omega npq. So this is uh, so this is going to be e raised to minus n p q omega over square root of n p q 
multiplied by the by the characteristic function of x evaluated at omega over square root of n p q. But on the other hand, the characteristic function of x is easy. Uh, that's going to be expected value of e raised to j omega x. So this is e raised to j omega k probability of x equal to k. k goes from 0 through n for, because x takes the value 0 through n. So if I substitute probability of x equal to k, that is pk. So So p k q to the power n minus k e raised to j omega k I picked up here k equal to zero through n. So this is the expansion of p e raised to j omega plus q to the power n. So we can start here. So we take this expression. So v x evaluated at omega over square root of n p q is going to be p e raised to j omega over square root of n p q plus q to the power n. So phi y of omega from here, so remember we are going to take this expression, phi y of omega is going to be that constant e to the power minus j n p omega over square root of n p q multiplied by this expression. Uh, p e raised to j omega over square root of n p q uh, plus q to the power n. So I'm going to absorb this term inside. So this n will go away. Here this will become 1 minus p, everything. But 1 minus p is q. So this becomes p e raised to <coughs> j q omega over square root of n p q plus q and this goes uh, here this is e raised to minus j uh, p omega over square root of n p q and the whole thing to the power uh, so uh, if I <coughs> easiest way is to expand uh, these two terms so this is p multiplied by 1 plus j q omega over square root of n p q and the next term is j squared but j squared uh, q squared omega squared over n p q multiplied by 2 factorial uh, plus etc. This is one term. The other term is q multiplied by 1 minus j p omega over square root of n p q uh, min, uh, then plus a square of that. So that's plus j squared or minus j the whole squared. Uh, p squared omega squared over 2 n p q, uh, etc. And then this whole thing to the power n. So if you notice here, the first term is p plus q. That's 1. So this is 1. And the next term is uh, you have j <coughs> plus j p q omega over square root of n p q. Then here you have, this is j squared by the way. j squared is minus 1. Multiple, so here you have uh, p q squared omega squared over 2 n p q plus terms. Remember I already took the p plus q here. This is p, uh, this is q here minus j p q omega over square root of n p q and uh, here again minus j squared is uh, minus 1 uh, so p squared q omega squared over 2 n p q plus other higher order terms to the power n as i said p plus q is 1 this term cancels with uh, this term in the other one p q is common here so we can write this as 1 plus p q multiplied by, then you have a q here, we have a p here, this is minus. Uh, so you have p plus q omega squared minus 2 n p q. So p q p q cancels and <coughs> plus other terms involving n to the power 3 by 2 etc uh, to the power n. 
So the bottom line is this is as limit n goes to infinity, this is going to look like 1 minus omega squared over 2n, omega squared by 2 over n to the power n plus higher order terms and this is going to look like e raised to minus omega squared by 2 which is a corresponds to a Gaussian or a normal random variable. So this is the characteristic function of a normal random variable with the parameter mu equal to 0 and sigma squared equal to 1. So what we can conclude is remember this is happens to be the y. So y which is x minus np over square root of npq is normal with uh, then this is just a standard uh, substitute. So of course x is going to be the square root of npq multiplied by y plus np. From here you can quickly see that the mean of x is just np because mean of y is 0 and the variance of x is the variance, the mean doesn't, uh, is going to be simply the variance of y which is 1 multiplied by the square of the, uh, multiplied by the constant squared. So that's going to be npq. So bottom line is since x and y are linearly transformation, x is also normal uh, with the first parameter np and uh, the second parameter npq. So what we have shown is x which is a binomial as, so the assumption is, the only condition is as n becomes large, it's beginning to look like a Gaussian random variable. And of course this approximation is true in the np, in the square root of npq neighborhood of np. So in other words this approximation is more or less, uh, is quite accurate around this region. So this is the this is approximately np and the spread is going to be uh, plus minus square root of npq. So in that neighborhood this approximation is accurate.